Alright guys, what's going on? Airy Lords here. Um, yeah, just coming together with our weekly vlog, uh, uploading it a little later. I know I usually try to do it on like a Wednesday, uh, Friday kind of thing, but I'm filming this late Thursday night. Um, pretty late actually. Um, so, just wanted to talk about just a few things and some predictions coming up for this week's episode of The Walking Dead. Obviously, I have to first apologize because the episode 13 reaction was kind of messed up. As a lot of you guys noted on my um, comments section and also with the video views, it was significantly less than what I normally get and I understand why. You know, you're not going to share a video where there's that annoying sound. Um, I just didn't choose the, the right mic setting. There's, there's, for some reason, there's two microphones. There's one that's, like, built into my computer. Uh, so you were literally hearing the fan spinning around in my laptop, producing that sound. And then, obviously, I have my Snowball, um, Yeti Blue microphone, which is what I use for all of my audio purposes. It's good quality, obviously. Um, and that's my main microphone, and... For some reason, the, the 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 capture software just didn't pick up the microphone, and I didn't notice it. And by the time I noticed it, I was editing it in uh, Sony Vegas, and I was like, "Oh, this doesn't have the right audio." I was like, "Oh, so I had two options. It was either um, it was either not upload the reaction at all." Uh, or put the reaction up with the choppy audio and you know the reaction I thought there were some funny moments with me and my friend Pete and <clears throat> I didn't want to you know not have the video upload at all because then I'd be getting comments where's the video rather than comments of oh the audio sucks so apologies for that um, I will double triple check for episode 14's reaction that um, that doesn't happen um, and then just kind of moving forward with um the se I mean, we only have three more episodes of this season. I cannot believe how fast Season 8 has gone by, the second half and just everything else. Um, and it's getting to some interesting territory. From the preview, it looks like um, Rick and Morgan are going after the saviors that got loose. And since Jared is one of the saviors that got loose, I can pretty much say... I I'm going to make a prediction and say that Morgan's going to kill Jared, considering Jared's the, Jared's the long-haired douchebag, uh, the one that killed... Um, Benjamin and set Morgan off on this crazy path in the first place. Uh, Henry's uh, older brother. And uh, he most likely was one of the saviors that got loose. Because some of the saviors stayed behind. That guy with like the curly bushy hair uh, who like doesn't want to be with the saviors anymore. Uh, and then there were a few other saviors who heard the same thing and they're not staying. Uh, because Simon stupidly... Like I don't understand. In, in episode 10... He saw the box and he was angry. He's like, hey, that's those are my men. All those men are from the satellite outpost. Those are my men. I'm going to kill all of them. Like, it seemed like he wanted retaliation because those were his men. Now he refers to them as damaged goods in episode 13 when him and Maggie are on the, on the walkie-talkie. And he's like, ah, screw them. And she smartly did it right in front of <laughs> right in front of them so that they could all hear what Simon really thought of them and that's why some it did work some of them turned um i wonder if that curly haired guy is going to be like a long term character there's a character in the comics named D dante i don't know much about him I, I didn't read you know all of the comic material i'm not really familiar on what dante's role is there hasn't been a character in the walking dead show named dante yet um, I don't know if this is a character who was a savior and then turned, or if this is just or some random... If, and I think I think in the comics he was like a random hilltop um, member. Um, I'll have to look it up after. But some people have made prediction videos saying, is this curly-haired savior Dante? He I mean, he's shown up a lot. I mean, he was kind of the poster child for the POWs, and he's proven that, you know, they... They, should, they shouldn't have killed them. And he was kind of being rational with Maggie. Like, hey, Maggie, don't cut off our rations. Don't kill us. Um, he was really trying to be the voice of reason, especially where Jared was concerned, being the douchebag who's always trying to instigate trouble. Um, and now he's out. So um, Morgan and Rick are going after them. Uh, there's a preview where they're fighting zombies together. Um, and then on the other side of things, you have... 
uh, Daryl and Rosita, and I think also Michonne, I'll have to look at the preview again, but they're going after Eugene, because they, according to the preview, they're low on ammunition, and Daryl's like, well, we could go hand-to-hand -hand combat, but, you know, considering the saviors have gunkified their weapons, we could either do the same thing, but it's it's just kind of like a high-risk, low-reward, because if you get cut once, you're, you're, you're screwed as we saw in the last episode with Tobin and all of the other people who were turned and killed. So um, <clears throat> so it looks like there's going to be some focus on Eugene. We see, very similar to episode 14's shot from season 7, when Sasha and uh, Rosita were aiming with the scope, uh, looking at the sanctuary, trying to kill Negan. We see, similarly, them now looking at Eugene's um, his production facility for making uh, ammunition. Um, are they going to steal the ammunition for themselves? I mean, I feel, I feel like they would have to, because basically the Saviors now have, uh, quote-unquote, an unlimited source of ammunition, and the, we know the survivors are running dangerously low, especially after that attack that just happened in episode 13. So will Eugene be captured? Will he willingly leave? I mean, the only good thing that we've seen him do is allow Dr. Carson and Gabriel to escape, which was all for nothing, considering Dr. Carson was killed, and Gabriel was captured and thrown back with um, with Eugene. So nothing came of that. So either Gabriel's going to do something, or Eugene's willingly going to leave, or Eugene will be killed. I mean, again, Eugene doesn't do any of this in the comic books. I mean, he's always on Rick's side and was looking for his way to escape, even when he was captured. So who knows where that's going to go. Um... Also with Tara, there's no way she's killed. I mean, obviously Dwight has proven time and time again he's on Rick's side. He did not put zombie guts on that arrow, so she's going to be fine. That's why he did it, because he saw Simon going over to kill her. And then Dwight's like, no, screw it, I've got to intervene to keep my cover, but then also make sure that she doesn't die. So that's why he did it. Um, there's a similar scene that happens to Rick in... Um, in the comics, um, where Rick gets hit with an arrow right through the side, and Negan thinks that they've won the war because Dwight has seemingly put guts on the arrow, but obviously he didn't. Um, they did that same scene with Tara, although I don't know if they'll try to recreate it with Rick in episodes, you know, f probably 15 or 16, who knows, um, I will have to see, um, as per usual, the ocean side is completely out of the picture. Um, I think I'm realizing just how <laughs> irrelevant the ocean side is. Like, it's kind of sad that when we think about it, um, the scavengers, Jadis' group, they were more relevant to the plot of All Out War than the ocean side was because the scavengers have been a bargaining chip on Rick and Neek, like, because Rick wanted them originally, then Negan turned them at the end of Season 7, then Rick tried to flip them back, he had to prove himself, killed Winslow 2.0, showed himself up to Jadis, um, then he had them, they went to the sanctuary, they retreated, uh, and then Simon and Negan found out about it, and then Simon killed them all, and now Jadis is getting her revenge by capturing Negan and taking Negan out of play, who is the big bad of the saviors and a pretty big wild card and big, you know, playing card to basically um, bargaining chip to use. Seemingly, you know, Maggie wants him dead. Rick obviously wanted him dead in episode 12. So now that we don't know what Jadis is going to do, and that's going to, some questions will be answered next episode. Uh, the previews that we've seen where <laughs> Negan is tied to like a skateboard like he doesn't have his jacket on he's tied to a skateboard Jadis has Lucille over her shoulder I was like holy crap like if, if for all the things that I predicted I was like that is not one of the things I predicted Jadis capturing Negan you know I just thought that Jadis would you know go off with Rick and hey I think you know in the end Rick kind of even though it was not right for him to turn Jadis away and not be open to people who you know need a home um it seemingly worked because Jadis was able to work in the shadows and try to make a comeback, and she ended up doing that by capturing Negan, so... Pretty cool, but to get back to my original point, um... What, what has been the use of the Oceanside? Like, they were in the mid-season finale where Natanya was killed, and, uh, Enid did it, and basically it was like, oh, okay, alright, so the woman that has been suppressing this group 
not letting them venture out. Now she's dead. Let's see how Sydney takes control. And then Sydney takes control, is going to seemingly execute Enid and Aaron. And then Enid says, uh, that's a stupid decision because we'll come back and fuck you up. Kind of similar to what Rick said to Jadis. Rick's like, if you do anything to me, kill me or anything, my people will find out about it. I might be here alone, but my people are going to find out about what you did to me. So you better not do something to me because they're going to find out. Obviously, Jadis didn't call that bluff, and she realized that she should have. Um, but Sydney realizes this without having, you know, without making Aaron and Eden go through some crazy trial. And then she just let them go. She just said, well, she did say something interesting. Enid said, if we beat the saviors, do you want to know? And Sydney says, yes, actually, I do want to know. So, okay, she's still somewhat invested. Um, Aaron and Enid, when they're talking alone, say that two of the, the, the only other two uh, Oceanside residents that are named, uh, Beatrice and Kathy, uh, back in season seven, they had mentioned that they were interested in um, fighting. And obviously, Natanya suppressed that thought. But Aaron stayed behind. Enid went back to the hilltop, obviously. But Aaron is still there. Aaron is still at the Oceanside trying to come up with some strategy to get these women to join the fight. But the thing is, for me, like, time is running out. Like, Unless they come in in the season finale and, like, you know, save the day or something in, like, the 15th or 16th episode, like, what what are they keeping this group around for? Like, is there something more they're keeping them around for in season 9? Like, their main role was, like, the only semblance that they had was that they were an ocean community, they were all women, and the reason that they were all women is because the saviors killed all of their men. Now... We can. There's been theories that Simon was the one who did this because Simon has now, you know, considering what he did to Jadis' group, has been shown to just murder people without a second thought because he's angry, he doesn't get his way, he kind of has that, you know, Trevor from GTA burst of emotion of anger, and um, he makes irrational decisions, and Negan probably, that's probably, I mean, people have said, when Negan said, are we backsliding Simon people think that's what that's a reference to now it hasn't been brought up and I I, I you know it, it would make sense plot wise but and it's a good way it would have been a good way to bring the ocean side back into the fold because Rick like or Negan like that they don't know the ocean sides even out there like Negan and Simon they don't even know that the ocean sides out there they don't even know that Rick saw them, has been dealing with them, took all of their weapons, like many of the weapons, it's funny, now ironically the saviors have all the weapons because Rick stole the weapons from the ocean side, gave them to Jadis' group as part of their deal, and then Simon came in later and said, uh, we're taking all these guns because you broke our original deal, so they took all their weapons, so in the end, you know, most of those weapons... Maybe save for a few, because some of the scavengers were killed in the Season 7 finale. So maybe some of the guns were left behind. They wasted some ammunition. But for the most part, they went back to the freaking saviors. So, my point in all of this is, I don't really... You know, with three episodes left, and, you know, you got a bunch of different plot points coming up. You know, you've got you know, what Carol's decision is going to be. You've got, you know, if she's going to stay or go. You've got Maggie's leadership ability, and obviously... They're pretending she's not even pregnant. And the people, a lot of my fans have said this as a criticism, and my friend uh, who do the re who does the reaction videos has said this about you know Maggie not showing pregnancy. In my opinion, I don't think they're gonna show her pregnant until season nine if she stays with the show. I hope because there's been rumors that Lauren Cohan might not, but they won't do it until then. That's my opinion, and I don't think enough time has passed to warrant that showing and again some women don't show as much as others and i i don't i'm not a freaking professional on this stuff but i'm just kind of saying what i know from hearsay um but you've got that with maggie then you've got morgan going absolutely crazy i mean he was seeing those visions of gavin saying you know what it is you know what it is morgan's going into into clear mode i mean we've seen this all season i remember Episode 2, when he was in the satellite station and he was just shooting, he had that silenced handgun. 
And he was just murdering saviors left and right. And then in episode three, when um, he was murdering more saviors, and then he has that one-on-one fight with Jesus because he's really going fucking crazy. So, and then then you know the scene where he's stalking Gavin, like yo, know, it's freaking uh, um, Michael Myers kind of thing. Like, you know, Morgan. This season has not been kind to Morgan ever since. Benjamin died he has been like just off the deep end and I was expecting that Morgan was going to die at the end of this season but now I know that's not happening because he's a crossover character in Fear the Walking Dead so something at the end of this season could even be this episode coming up is going to influence his decision to leave the group and go out west and meet up with uh, Madison and all of the survivors from Fear the Walking Dead. Now, I've only watched season one of Fear the Walking Dead. I have not watched seasons two and three. Some people have said, you know, just watch season three. It's much better. Season two is boring with the boat. Um, I mean, I, I might start watching Fear the Walking Dead only because Morgan's in it. And, you know, Lenny James is, is a fantastic actor. And having... You know, Lenny James wasn't even in the show for much. I mean, you know, think about it. You know, he wasn't in season two. You know, he was in only in one episode of season three. He wasn't in any episodes of season four. And then he was in that first episode of season five. But for most of season five, he wasn't in it. He was in the first episode, the mid-season finale, and then the finale. So it was only season six he became like a series regular. So then, you know, season six, seven, eight, he's been in the show full time. So, um... And, you know, Morgan does not last this long in the comics. You kill him off pretty quickly in the comics. But he was also much more of a boring character in the comics. But, um, <clears throat> so yeah, you got that. Um, what else? Daryl. Daryl being Daryl. I mean, the main thing with Daryl, I mean, there's not many plot points with Daryl. It's mainly just how much he trusts Dwight, you know. It, it Just him and Tara go back and forth on how much they trust Dwight. Um, yeah, you, you know, you got Dwight, you know, is his when his loyalty is finally revealed... Um, Sherry, is she, is she ever going to come back? Heath, is he ever going to come back? Um, I don't know. I mean, Michonne and Rick are still in a mourning period over Carl. You know, Rick's ultimate decision of over what's going to happen with Negan. I don't know, man. They're, I mean, with only three episodes left, I'm just trying to rationalize what they're going to squeeze into this episode. And I hope, because it doesn't look like too much happens in episode 14, from the previews at least. And... I'm hoping some stuff does happen because, I don't know, like, I hope either Eugene's captured, maybe Jared is killed finally by Morgan, like, maybe that's the thing, then he kills Jared, then he fucking ventures off into the great beyond and says, Rick, I have had enough, I've had enough, Rick, and then he just leaves, and that would suck, and I know it's, and no, the thing is, I know, I know he's leaving, and it's a... I don't know. I would have rather Lenny James stay or died. I mean, maybe if they gave him like a really nice death and said, "All right, that's his send off." Um, but he did say he doesn't die. I don't die. I don't die, Rick. I don't die. So whatever. I guess he doesn't die. Um, so yeah, you got you got other characters. All right, and you you know you got Jadis too. You know what's gonna happen to her? I don't. I hope she doesn't die. I hope you know she doesn't bring Negan to Rick or the Saviors, and then maybe there's like a confrontation she gets killed in the crossfire because you know he, all the other scavengers are already killed so she's the last character that's keeping the whole plot alive with that junkyard especially because there seems to be more to going on with the junkyard there is a solar panels helipad we did see a helicopter earlier is there some relation to that the opening scene for episode 14 the preview that was shown she's in like a bunker like an underground military compound some type of uh, you know and she's in there like she knew about it all along and i'm like oh is this where her people were staying like i'm interested if she if her and negan like that whole story is going to be at the junkyard and she's going to say hey yeah this is some bunker and we've been here and blah 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 and yeah i mean she, i know she came to the canvas you know she went to the junkyard to do her paintings before the world went to shit but um but still, um, I don't know, it's interesting, like, for me, that's one of the more interesting plot points right now, the whole Jadis Negan thing, I'm very interested in that, because it was kind of right out of left field, um, and then obviously the resolution of the war, I'm just, I, I can't think of a way that this war is going to end, because in the comics it was very cookie cutter, because Negan, you know, he led his charge into the hilltop, they had to retreat, and Dwight shot 
Rick. Negan thought Rick was dead. Um, and then Negan's like, all right, Rick's dead. This is going to be easy. Um, and then Rick's not dead. Rick has this giant speech about why they shouldn't be fighting. And then Negan has like a fucking eureka moment and says, oh shit, I shouldn't be fighting you. I, th that, I don't, that, how can that happen now? Because Simon has, si well, again, Simon, not a character in the comic. Simon has gone against Negan, killed all the scavengers. Negan now knows this because of Rick. Negan can't exact his revenge because he's captured by Jadis. Will Negan have a change of heart because he's captured by Jadis and all the stuff with Carl? Um, I, I don't see Simon surviving. I'm going to say that. Like, I really like his character, but I really don't think he's going to... I, there's no way. Either Negan or Rick is going to kill Simon. Like, or or Daryl. The One of the three. Either Daryl, Rick, or, or uh, Negan. Um, will kill Simon. There's, he's a dead man. Like, as soon as Negan gets back, there is no, like, Simon is the de facto leader right now. And he stole, like, almost like Hamlet, he made sure Negan was out of the picture so he could take charge. Like, it was kind of scummy. And for him to do it in light of Dwight doing the same thing, but no one knows it. And uh, and also, what happened with Laura? Are we ever going to find out what happened with Laura, the girl who discovered that Dwight was the traitor, and then she just ran away, and we never fucking figured out what happened to her? Like, I don't know. There's so many questions. Um, let me, guys, like, I think the main thing, the main topic I want for this vlog is what do you think... Where do you see the end game for the, for the rest of season eight going? Like, how do you th how do you think the war will be resolved? Because the only clue that we have is Rick sitting underneath that tree with the stained glass steel sign swaying in the breeze, and it looks like he's injured. Okay, that's the only clue we have. And then he says that quote: "My mercy prevails over my wrath." Now, obviously, the biggest indicator is that he spares Negan's life. Most likely, what's going to happen? He goes. Negan goes to jail. But how does that happen right now? How does that happen? Does Jadis say offer Negan as a tribute? Look, I have Negan. I did it. You know, I'm. Can I be on your side now? And then maybe then Rick says, No, it's too easy to kill him right now. We should capture him. That makes us better. This is what Carl would have wanted. But but how does that play out? How does, does Simon attack one more time and then Simon's kill? Like like what what happens? So. It, it's it's exciting for me because it's I don't know last season it was much easier for me to say okay Rick's building his army Rick's building his army building his army there's going to be a big confrontation at Alexandria Negan's going to finally retreat and then All Out War is on for season 8 uh, the only wild card was, the, was Jadis and the Scavengers betraying Rick that was the only wild card but for the most part Rick had been gathering his army, his guns, his people, and then everyone came together in the end. So, you could kind of tell where things were going. This, like, I don't know. It's just so many monkey wrenches have been thrown in. I have no idea. But rather than talk in a circle, I'll let you guys kind of dissect it. Sit with this video. Again, apologies for the how the audio quality turned out for last week. I will improve that. I guarantee you. Okay? So... Again, thank you guys. Um, three more videos, three more Sundays of Walking Dead, and then we enter our usual down period. And I'll probably have some vlogs to make about that, just some feelings I have about the Walking Dead moving forward. And then I'm going to try to do some Far Cry 5 gameplay. I actually, the game was delivered to me just a few days ago, and um, it's, you know, I haven't really been playing many video games at all, and it's the first game in a while I'm actually, like, I'd want to play. I've played Far Cry 3 and 4, so uh, I didn't get Primal, but. 5 is continuing with the modern day-ish Far Cry, so that's the one I've been waiting for. So it's been four plus years, so looking forward to it. So, alright, so thank you guys for watching. Peace out. See ya.